Someone saw a video that I did on fillet welds and challenged me to demonstrate how to do one around a pipe. So today we'll see if I can drop one that looks good and give a demo on how to do it. My name is Dusty and I'm a welding artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. On my YouTube channel, it is my mission to teach and show off the possibilities of TIG welding. And I want to show it to all the positive people in the welding industry who love TIG welding as much as I do. So join me for my mission on my channel and let's get welding. This is Pacific Arc TIG welding. So I have an older video on my channel where I demonstrate how to do a fillet weld. I actually think the one that was commented on was a stainless steel fillet weld. And I actually don't even know if I have one on how to do a fillet weld with aluminum TIG welding. Maybe I should jump back and redo that video as well. Matter of fact, if you would like to see a new version of that video, comment below and let me know. I'll crack that episode off for you real quick. But anyway, someone left a comment on that one, challenging me to do it around a pipe on a piece of plate. Now, in most circumstances, I'm pretty confident and comfortable doing a fillet weld. It's definitely more challenging to do one around a piece of pipe. So today, let's get dialed in and try and do this exact thing and make it look as good as possible. Let's go over machines. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, we got the Everlast 255 EXT running here. Turn the water cool off because it's a little bit quieter. There's only this fan going, but this is it. It's a pretty simple setup. We're just running advanced square AC. Even though we're running 200 amps, I don't think we're gonna use all of that at all. I'm gonna be running the foot pedal, obviously, so that will dictate how much of the 200 amps I use. But that's it, rolling through the menu here. 120 hertz, 31, I don't know why it's 31. Well, 31 then, fine, whatever. All right, let's roll 31. Zero down slow, five seconds of pulse flow. 200 amps, there we go. Let's turn the cooler back on. There we go, there's two fans running there. So doing a fillet weld is a really fun one to learn. This is one of the joints I teach in my online training program. I have a link to that in the description below. Check it out if you're interested in me teaching you how to take weld. But just a quick breakdown, learning a fillet weld in a straight line, in my opinion, is much easier in a straight line than going around a surface like a pipe. When you're doing it in a straight line, obviously you have straight lines to follow. And it's pretty easy to see when you're doing this one, if you're doing it correctly or not. When you try and do the same weld around a piece of pipe, however, things become a little more difficult. We lose our straight line, so it's a little more difficult to stay consistent with the profile of the weld. Another thing that's much more difficult than doing it in a straight line, it's much easier to maintain consistent torch and travel angle as you move across a straight line. Doing it around a pipe, however, is difficult because nowhere on the surface is there a flat edge or anything that's straight. Your angle will change constantly as you go around it. Everything is always going around a corner, so no matter how comfortable you get in that position, as soon as you advance from your starting point, you already have to make corrections to your angles. Something I do with this one is I always plan ahead. I will get completely comfortable with my hand being able to travel a couple inches of travel distance. I also need to pay close attention to the angle that my filler rod is being fed into the joint. If my angles become a little bit unstable, one of the most common things that somebody will see is they will be blowing off the end of their filler rod as they go to put it into the weld zone. Matter of fact, does that ever happen to you? This one happens to me once in a while, drives me crazy. Let me know in the comments below if that one makes you as insane with anger as it does with me. But the reason that that happens is this, and that is your angles. One thing I prefer to do with this one is I prefer to bend my filler rod. One thing that always gets in the way of my visibility with this one is my hand. So for anybody who's fresh on this one, just learning it for the first time, you may notice that your filler rod hand is a little bit fumbly and may get in the way. Bending your filler rod allows you to keep your hand more out of the weld zone, thus keeping it out of your line of sight a lot better and helping out with visibility. I actually did a video on this one. It mostly covers visibility and how to position yourself so you can see around your filler rod hand and how to take care of any problems when learning this. That video is right here. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Be sure to check this one out. So once I'm sure I'm able to travel comfortably and I can maintain an adequate angle with my filler, it's time to party. Okay, so the most important part of any weld, I say it all the time, is the start. I've already given it a little bit of filler rod here. Now it's time to just fill and chill. We'll let that thing heat up as much as it needs to before we start moving. So again, fillet welds are notoriously difficult to heat back up to the temperature you need. So every stop I do, I make sure when I restart, I let things sink in properly, take the blend and size that they need to before moving. Now that we got it going again, it's time to move. We're heading towards the edge of the plate here. So we're gonna start using a little less amperage as we get close to the edge.
So again, even though things are hot because we're on the edge of the plate, I'm going to make sure that we chill out long enough and we get the profile and size that we need of the weld before continuing. Now that things look the way they should, I'm going to start moving again. As you can see here, I have bent my filler rod. My filler rod is bent so I can sneak around the corner, also sneak around the camera. Get a little view from over top there. Nice pass. What's typical with these joints is a lot of people throw a lot of heat at them to get them heated up to the size they need. But what's more important is just taking a little bit of extra time at each start. This way you can use less heat and it will get to the size that you needed to with a little more patience. So the view from above here, what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at the bottom line, so the gravity affected side of the weld. Your weld is obviously going to want to get pulled to the lower side because that's the way gravity is pulling it. So I'm going to keep a really close eye on this bottom line to make sure that none of the puddles dart out and get pulled out by gravity further than the ones previous to it. We want to keep them all the same. As we come around the corner here to finish it, that's that. Okay, so now it's cold. Let's take a look. Overall, we see a pretty good finish. We see everything nice and shiny for the most part, which is what we want. Usually with stuff like a fillet weld, one of the telltale signs of how your heat was, was reading your cleaning action. If your ring of cleaning action was pretty much even the whole way around, that means the amperage that you used was pretty much bang on. I had a good angle because we had equal cleaning action from top to bottom. That's pretty good. Obviously, you see a little bit of puff here and there as we did our start stops. Looking at it from the top here, we see a pretty good profile. We see a nice round profile to our bottom edge here, which is what we want. We don't want any puddles darting out further than others. And for the most part, they all look pretty consistent, so that's good. I see my stepping distance pretty equal from each step. We have enough filler that we get good puddle definition so we can see each dab clearly, especially around this side here. This was some of the best stuff here. By this point, it was nice and hot. Everything had blended in really nicely. And as you can see, each step is clearly defined with good puddle definition, so that's what we want. Flip it over, you can see we did punch through a little bit, but for a visual inspection, this guy looks pretty consistent. I'm pretty happy with it. And then as far as button placement at the end, I made sure my button was centered properly. The button didn't hang out too low, it didn't raise up too high. Overall, the reinforcement of it is pretty consistent to the rest of the weld. Look at that, nice and shiny. Exactly what we want. So again, be sure to check out the original video right here. Again, it's stainless steel. So if you want me to redo one that's aluminum, let me know in the comments below. I will do it for you. Also, as I mentioned before, check out this video as well. It's going to go over thoroughly how to deal with your filler rod hand and seeing around it with proper visibility. And another thing, really important, go out today and do a random act of kindness for a stranger. It's the only thing I ask in return for what you have learned here today. The world needs more positivity, so go out and do your part. So pop on over to those other videos, check them out. For Pacific Arc TIG Welding, my name's Dusty, Phil and Chill. Talk soon, peace.